and it's that time of the season when Giga drops 2024 anime in a nutshell. This is summer 2024. Hey, let's check it out. Why is he in bed right now? <laughs> oh, hi, yo, my Oni chan. I am so cringe and attractive. Your little otaku sister, ew. Oh, hi, yo, my Oni chan. <laughs> Your little sister is waking you up at love in the fuck kitchen. You doing? Did you just tell your sister to. Are you. <laughs> no, that, and then Masatsuka said, get off me. And then I think Yuki says, did you say that you wanted to get off of off on me or some shit? I'm exhausted from me saying at the beginning of every one of these videos how yeah. many new high profile shows are coming out. Well, welcome to summer 2024 anime where we have romance anime, mm -hmm. including oh, Sussy Sisters. Right? Romance anime with Sussy Sisters. And my editor doing the trademark scroll of the seasonal chart, okay? And there's actually not many shitty isekais being pumped out this season. Summer 2024 seems to be the season of rom-com, slice of life, and anything but shitty isekais. Now, there are a couple shitty isekais. You can see a couple already. Like, I think Failure Frame, right? It's, it's, it's a little shitty isekai. It's a trashy isekai, right? Maybe the manga is great, but come on, the animation is god dookie. The story is getting a little bit more interesting. But my favorite isekai this season is Isekai Shikaku. That one is genuinely good. But other than that, mostly rom-coms and slice of life. Hey, we're scrolling. We're, 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 we're still scrolling. Oh, look at this scrolling. Is that some sussy sisters I see? Actually a good show. Not even baiting uh, incest. Actually decent. So I'm not going to take up your time. You know the drill by now. It's a summer anime video, so enough waiting. Let's just bloody jump right into it. How is she going to land this? What the fuck kind of vert is this, bro? <laughs> Yo, put her in the fucking league. So you're gonna land? Holy shit! You good? Any, any second now. Are you good? She's dead, isn't she? What? Oh, this some fucking days in my stepsister shit, where they hold a fucking frame for thirty seconds without anything happening. She. Let's go. Summer 2024 in that shell, Guys, baby. I'm sure we're here. I'm guessing you like watching anime. What? Are we about to get an ad? How did you know? So shouldn't you be able to watch as many titles as you can as- Yes, I swear to God, if you're about to drop a, ne a fucking Netflix or a Crunchyroll, bro, what's it gonna be? Painlessly as possible? Well, with today's sponsor, ExpressVPN. All right, we love VPNs here. Yes, use here. I thought he was about to do a Crunchyroll or like a fucking Netflix ad after the recent fucking debacle with, you know, their services. But hey, use the ExpressVPN. Use the code GIGUK2024 for your first time 10% off or some shit. VPN.com slash GIGUK2024 to find out how you can get three months of ExpressVPN for free. No yes, way. Free. Thank you for ExpressVPN for sponsoring this Whoa. video. Let's get on with summer 2024. Magic! And if you can't use magic, you're garbage! Hold up, this is MASH! Gamers. <laughs> what? Fuck! Okay, stop me if this sounds vaguely familiar. Short, mm. muscular boy donning a black cloak who can't use mm. magic in a world dominated by magic, enters a magic academy, aiming to be the top magic person in this magic world, gets yep. ridiculed, but is actually super strong, taking down everything with his brute strength and big... I mean, the most recent version of this, where you have magic is the only thing that matters. Oh yeah, Black Clover as well, right? Because the Black Clover, sh yeah, that's actually more accurate. Mash is more like Fizz. This dude has like an anti-magic sword, so it's Black Clover, right? Sword, hold up. I would start filing the DMCA claim myself, if the show didn't go so goddamn hard. Dude, it's so good. This is Wistoria, an anime coming from the director of Black Clover. Could you tell? Oh! <laughs> Oh, that's f I didn't know that. I, I genuinely did not know that. What? <laughs> I knew the Damachi similarity, but like, what? There's an actual person that worked on Black Clover on this? Could you tell? And the writer of Danmachi. Shit. Could you tell? And the character designer. Wait, Danmachi Black Clover? Wait, 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 wait. So hold up, hold up. This guy's Black Clover. Tatsuya, Tatsuya Yoshihara, right? Writer of Black Clover. Animator for Chainsaw Man Project as well. Uh, could you tell? And the writer of Dan. The art. Uh, wait, he. I didn't know. Danmachi is the same fucking author as Black Clover? 
No, 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 Check the names. Check the names. Fujino Omori, right? Fujino Omori is Damachi, right? And then that Tat... And then... Fuck, fuck, come on. Where is this shit? This Tatsuya Yoshihara is Black Clover. Separate, 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 separate. Black Clover, could you tell? And the writer of Danmachi, could you tell? And the character designer of Cross Age, could you tell? It's a premise <laughs> no. we've seen before, following a formula that's oh so familiar, but presented in a shiny new package that looks absolutely phenomenal. Yep. Episode 1 hits you with this heart pounding, jaw dropping action scene, with the director seemingly taking all the lessons learned from working on Black Clover and refining it to the highest degree, then continues to deliver in the very like, the Black Clover theme is like the anti-magic swordsmanship. And then like, the Danmachi is like, the firebolt moment, you know? The fucking Minotaur in the Labyrinth, right? The combination of the two. In the very next episode. On a visual standpoint, we're starting the season off with a bang. Because, yep. I don't know if any other show is going to look as good as this. Th uh, there are a couple competitions. I think that um, Cloverworks is cooking with the Elusive Samurai. But, um, and Dogakobo with Oshinoko and Roshiri animations. I think that's fucking solid as well. There's definitely competitors, but Wistory is definitely on that top tier of animation. I would dare say even A1 Pictures with too many losing heroines right now. The quality is amazing. I don't think it's surpassing these, but I think that it can keep up. Wistoria is not a theme, again, that we're unfamiliar with, right? It's just like, dude that can't use magic goes in Magic Academy. People look down on him, and that creates the underdog hype. That creates the power fantasy, and it's all about executing tropes and niches in a good way, and I think that with story is a fantastic watch. Okay, guys, I gotta get serious for a bit. Okay. Now, I know you can see the title of this show, and I'm very yeah. aware of what kind of taste you think. <laughs> well, they did bait. Well, here's the sad thing, right? Days of my stepsister, people watched that shit on my channel when the sussy fucking incest baits were happening. Like, oh, do you want to buy my body, right? There's some sus moments. But then as soon as that's gone and they're trying to do a proper storytelling, no one gives a fuck because most of the people watching this cannot appreciate the art and they just only want the horny incest shit. I have, but just listen to me when I say mm. with zero irony yeah, that it's good. This show is legit. No, it no, is. guys, hear me out. It isn't a meme. I'm being serious this time. It isn't what you think. Domestic girlfriend opening playing in the background. I know, I know. With the title like Days with My Stepsister, I too was expecting this to be the next trash field dumpster fire me too. spiritual successor of Domestic Girlfriend. But this somehow is a 100% serious, yeah, drama. So it's a slow burn drama, right? And yes, there is a little bit you know, incest bait here and there, but it's honestly such an insignificant portion of the amount of episodes that I've watched, and I thought that the storytelling is trying to be very serious. They're not fucking around. This is not, you know, shitty harm incest bait. It's it's a genuine slow burn drama. Somber drama with no cliches, fan service, pandering, or anything you'd expect from a romance story between step siblings i know you're thinking step sibling that? romance without the spice that's about as useful as fapping to get pregnant but <laughs> what step siblings without the spice that's about as useful as fapping to get pregnant <laughs> indirect pregnancy indirect yes this is indirect pregnancy happening right now be careful with that but as useful as fapping to get pregnant but honestly this looks like okay you probably weren't thinking that but this mm. honestly looks like they are trying to tell a grounded story about two people later in their lives meeting True. in awkward circumstances and the realistic drama that would surround it it's beautifully shot atmospheric taking its time with songs that speak right to the heart this shit is the doom true of incest this is on a Dune 2 of incest. I don't know about that. I hope he's gonna talk about the fucking filler animations. I don't give a fuck what you say about how this adds to the story, about how it sets the atmosphere. What the fuck even is an atmosphere, motherfucker? Most of people don't even know how to define it. They're like, oh, it's the setting, bro. It's the vibe. 40 seconds of them fucking walking through a street with their bicycles. It's setting the atmosphere. Nah, bro. Studio Dean is just trying to fucking match the watch time requirements for each episode. I don't believe that shit. Ironically, a really promising looking drama, and I swear to God, it's not because it has a sister in it. Alright, what's next? Oh, hi, you my only dad. The superior stepsis. Well, this isn't a stepsis. This is actual blood related. <clears throat> okay, guys. 
Listen to me when I say with zero irony, Alia sometimes hides her feelings in Russian. It's this good. anime's appeal is pretty simple to understand, you know, it's one of those cute little romance anime. I'm uh <laughs> Ain't that Eromanga Sensei? Is, is this Eromanga Sensei? I, I can't really remember if this is it, but um Roshitere, I think. Well, in terms of just pure numbers, right? We're not talking about what is the objectively best anime, however you would even define that, which is going to be biased for everyone because everyone values different things and what they think is good. But Roshiteri, in terms of just, like, numbers, bro, this shit is number one this season. Check out... And I know that YouTube reaction numbers are not a definitive gauge. It's not, a, it's not the end-all, be-all fucking um, data to... Uh, come to a conclusion on what is the most popular anime but i think that there definitely is some sort of scaling coefficient in how much you know this series performs well on everyone's channels across the board roche today is literally the anime of summer 2024 in my opinion not in terms of what i think the best anime is but in terms of what people want to watch on youtube comfortably watching on the living room sofa looks pretty wholesome and innocent then my dad walks in <laughs> sees this shit blasted on screen and goes gone scooch over son let your dad watch too how nice father and son bonding time this time we have a girl who flirts with the guy but the catch is she does the flirting in russian but wait the twist is he we know secretly understands her because <gasps> he also knows russian for some some inexplicable reason, reason. uh there's a reason Right? I think it was like, uh, wanted to learn Russian to talk to the girl on the top of the playground, right? When he was a kid, and that's most likely Ra Sasha. Or sorry, Masha. Uh, I don't know. I never counted. I am not really a math guy, you know? I'm just waiting for the episode where okay. he reveals that he understood her the entire time, and... Like, how's that gonna work, right? It's like, bro, it's gonna be the ultimate embarrassing moment for the Sundere when she realizes that every time that she said everything in Russian, we understood. It's pretty much exhibitionism at this point. I don't know how that's going to work out. The episode title was just Clueless Japanese Guy Surprises Foreign Girl with Perfect Russian. Normally, I've gotten tired of these kinds of shows now, but I think I'm going to give this one a chance. And you might be wondering why. No, I don't think that Yuki doing fan service like this is the only reason I'm watching this show. For sure, Yuki takes control over the scenes, right? For sure, her lines are insane. And it's making rounds on Twitter and online, you know, uh, discourse and virality. But, like, I genuinely think that Roche today, even without Yuki, is worth watching. And it's genuinely good. And, like, the story plot, it's not too complex. But they add just enough mysteries and hints and doesn't tell you the entire picture to keep you guessing each week after week. The character designs are peak. The whole format of how we're going into the election cycle and doing the debates. This shit's turning out to be a fucking tournament arc, bro. Like, Roche Dede is fantastic, and it's not some cheap rom-com. No, Jokokobo are just so good at what they do, they might as well be giving insulin shots with everything they make now. By the way, Dokakobo has been acquired by Karakawa. Uh, so now they're the sister company. Now, I don't know what that's really going to entail, right? Dokakobo was independent, you know, and they popped up with Oshinoko, but obviously those are the labors of passion. They probably... I don't exactly know the numbers or the profits, right? But I bet that... Every anime studio's goal is to pop off in the beginning with amazing animes, right? With such high quality production to the point people are asking, how the fuck is this even possible? And then they sell the company to a higher company for the profits there. That's what my assumption is. That like initially they take on the hit, they're cannibalizing, they're not making, you know, profits. But because they show potential, bigger corporations will then acquire them and then pump up more anime. Hopefully Dogakobo, you know, products continues to have that level of quality we see in Oshinoko though. It's not because of the little sister character. It has been a while though. Yuki is the best girl though, uncontested. Since the season hasn't been completely dominated by high-profile sequels, but there are still a few. Tower of God is back, My Hero Academia is still airing. <laughs> what is going on with My Hero Academia? It, it is such a polarizing show because of how well-received and loved it was in the beginning. 
like even the eight years ago, right? We're watching chibi reviews videos for ReZero season one, and there's so much love for My Hero Academia. But now it's just like people are shitting on it. The manga ended. People are making fun of Deku, saying just put my fries in the fucking bag. Like, is the anime even still good? Should we be checking out? I don't know, bro. Along with more Shy Hero Academia, starring Bocchi the Rocket. More what? near a tomato. Hopefully the hype for this season remains and it doesn't get plagued with production issues. Fair what hype does exist for Nier? Is anyone actually hyped about this shit? And I'm not saying Nier is bad, right? I love Nier, I love the soundtracks, but the way that the anime handles season one butchered any sort of momentum for the online audience to fucking keep up with. And then they drop part two and I hear it's still, like, you, you've, already fuck, you've already pissed off everyone trying to check out in the beginning. Like, are people still hyped about this? I'm genuinely curious. Fairy tale, 100 year quest? Who's asking for more fairy tale in 2020? Can we watch fairy tale one of these days, please? Four. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I I heard that fairy tale has a lot of fan service. I I see. I and this isn't even OG fairy tale. This is just a fucking sequel. Like what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> yeah, I see. So this is the reason you guys watch fairy tale. Hmm. Just, you, you just want to fucking... You should just go watch... Actually, what are you doing? What, what are you watching this shit for? Go watch High School DxD. What are you doing? You know, I think we may have been a bit too harsh on Fairy Tail. Their fans <laughs> have had it rough recently. And, you know, every anime has its positive points. One of yeah. is back to show all these modern anime how it's done. See, unlike all the other anime this season, Monogatari has historically depicted a more normal sibling relationship. Normal sibling, huh? Yeah, sure. Normal for the average fucking anime consumer. Chip. All right, grab the kid. Grab, go, 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 go. grab, grab, grab. Come on, you gotta go. Just, just get. It's, it's a kid. Go, go, guys, guys. Go. I got. It. Hot take. Now I'll, I'll, I'll let him cook with the samurai, and I'm about to piss every fucking samurai enjoyer off by the end of this. Just wait. <laughs> ah, dude, what the fuck? You got my arm. It was a misinput. Misinput. Calm down. You calm the fuck down! Cloverworks continue to prove that whether or not they mess up an adaptation, at the very least, everything they- Oh, they fucked up! They, they did Promise Neverland? Interesting, yeah. Windbreaker was amazing animation, right? Touch looks absolutely godlike. I thought Wistoria would far and beyond be the best looking anime this summer. Not the Cloverworks is there. In some of these storyboards, the amazing direction, casual art style switch up, and the pure animation eye candy might just put it a step above. Having yes, the animation quality of Elusive Samurai is... Probably number one, if not contesting for number one this season. That, that, I'm a bit confused as to what kind of tone we're going for here. Some Dark. dude gets diced up. Here's the thing, right? The tone. And this is the focal argument that I want to bring up regarding Elusive Samurai and why it's actually not that good. Because in the beginning, they fucking hook you with this crazy plot of this betrayal. And us as the crown prince of this family, this clan gets betrayed. And it's such a dark tone and I fucking love it. Everyone loves it. It went crazy, right? Takauji doing that shit, amazing. Second episode continues upon that dark theme with the uncle betraying. Amazing. But then, and it's not just ep after episode three. There is the jarring comedy, which I straight up think takes away from this show. Like, how the fuck am I supposed to get immersed into this dark fucking samurai setting? When at every time you do something edgy and dark, suddenly fucking Gojo Satoru turns on his fucking light lamp hat and has these funny scenes which aren't even funny. Like, do you genuinely think that the comedy in Elusive Samurai is adding to the show? In my opinion, it's actually such a jarring experience to have this dark setting, then have the unfunny moments try to fucking be inserted as comedy. I, I'm just, I just didn't vibe with it to a pile of bloody cubes. The whole village is massacred. A fucking kid gets beheaded. It has some of the most grueling, gruesome imagery you can find all season. Then it hits you with a... And like in the beginning, maybe it was kind of funny, but like it just started to take away from the show, in my opinion. This is like a shonen anime taking place during the Red Wedding, but credit to Cloverworks for being able to get this much attention worldwide. This is meant to be set during a real historical time period in Japan, and it's... And like... I think a lot of people just don't vibe with the samurai period. Some people might, right? And I'm not calling you as an individual out, but like, I think, at least from my audience, the samurai setting is not that desired. That plus the jarring comedy, which takes away from the serious dark tones of the plot that people are mainly watching for, I think is what made people really just not care about Elusive Samurai in my channel. The beginning was amazing. The animation quality is top tier. However, the next couple episodes 
I'm not so sure that I can say Lucid Samurai is the type of show that I was envisioning in the beginning. Stuff like this that can get an international audience interested in your history. I wonder what the Japanese audience thinks of this. Shoda. Oh my god, this Shoda is so breedable. The amount of... You thought that... I'm surprised they didn't do it with Lloyd last season. With 7th Shoda. BBL Prince. I'm surprised they didn't hoard that kid out. Because the things that they're doing with Tokyuki on Twitter is insane. Mm-hmm. There it is. That's enough history lessons for today. Right. And like... The way that like Yoshirige... Fucking Gojo Satoru's voice actor, the character. Like, there is so many sus moments where it's directly implying just Shotokan. Like, he's implying backshots on the kid during that fucking episode where he won against the archery contest. Like, remember that shit? It's not subtle hint. He's directly fucking saying the lines, implying it. And the way that he looks at the kid, like, Clearly, they're trying to sell this to an audience of Shotokan enjoyers, right? And there's nothing wrong with that, but like, clearly, like, don't tell me it's not fucking happening. All right, we've got to switch things up. Osamu right. Dazai has one of the most tragic stories in Japanese history. As one of Japan's most famous novelists, Isekai Shikaku incoming. Dazai experienced the darkness few humans have ever encountered, leading him to attempt to take his life not once, twice, but four times, to which fate denied him and forced him to continue living his torturous life. God, he fucking sucks. Can't even... Four times? Bro. Four times and you still couldn't do it? Like, how hard? I don't understand. Eventually, he would put his broken soul into the novel, No Longer Human, one of the most okay. harrowing pieces of media straight up skill issue created before he would eventually be able to successfully take his own life, finally fulfilling his wish of being left alone and finally given the grace of death. Nah, you gotta fucking come to our world and save the demon, save us from the, the demon lord now. That's the, that's the fate of every fucking person that tries to die like this. Anyway, here he is in a wacky isekai. Yep, yeah. we've got a silly comedy about a depressed author who wants to off himself in another world. Chomp I think that this is the isekai of the season. And there is no other isekai that I think is on this tier. Which is not much competition, because there's actually not much isekai, right? It's honestly just this and Failure Frame, and... There's a couple others, right? There's the one where there's like the independent girl who don't need no man, right? There's that isekai as well. And then there's another one where it's like the girl is like the only human in a furry isekai land and you're getting discriminated against on it. Yeah, I haven't checked those out, but of the isekais that I've seen, Tensura, ah, it's carrying over from last season. I guess I'm not counting in summer 2024. But I think the isekai Shikaku definitely stands out. Jumping pills like it's a mukbang video and charming goddesses with his... <clears throat> suicide, suicide Riz. 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 Yep. God, that line made me want to Osamu does on Suicide Riz, baby. It just works. It's so fucking good. Myself. This isn't the first time anime has taken creative liberties with their historical figures, boy, but Kome. it does make you wonder, is there anything they won't put in an isekai? <laughs> Suicide Squad isekai. I think that uh, isekai Shikaku didn't get really the attention it deserves here, so I'll do a little bit more. If you guys haven't seen this show, you don't know what you're missing out on. In the beginning, it does seem very stupid and silly, right? The twist is, this guy wants to die. He has no motivations to live. Like, he shows up. He tries to kill himself in the real world. And then Truckun shows up and transports him to another world. And then, the goddess is, sorry, the priest is like, Oh, oh, you fucking brave hero, please save us from the demon lord. And he's like, I just want to die. Why did you do this, right? So there's that comedy where he has no motivations to do shit compared to other isekai characters. Now, you think that it's just silly, but three episodes in, it gets actually so serious. And then a serious tone is shown with a plot twist that just flips the plot on its head. And you also get to see his powers, which is just one of the funniest shit possible. Isekai Shikaku is definitely an isekai that I would not be um, embarrassed to suggest to other people. This is not a shitty, trashy isekai that you would just eat up as slop. No, I think that it is genuinely good so far. Put in an isekai. Suicide Squad. Yep. Don't adjust your screens. This is really happening. When yep. I first saw this get announced, I had to double check that the date wasn't April 1st. This is an idea you'd expect for some wild fan fiction, but I think Warner Brothers realized all they needed to do was to give up. Yeah, just put Harley Quinn in an anime. That's it. And that's where it falls off. Because the amount of marketing and advertisement and the hype surrounding Suicide Squad was insane. And I think that the ending song with Mori Calliope and the visuals of Amanda Waller dancing fucking delivered. 
but I cannot say that for the story itself because you can tell that the story is very mid, right? It's not thing that we've ever seen before. It, it's not a unique plot. The Isekai plot is extremely just mid. And why is that? Because Warner Bros, they didn't really give a fuck about making a good product. They just wanted to slap Suicide Squad brand logo on an anime, put Harley Quinn there, and just hope that with the existing characters hype and the IP, that the anime will be well received by the audience. But here's the thing, you coming in to fucking Isekai land with Suicide Squad, people are gonna have a level of expectations that like Warner Bros or them, maybe they didn't even consider. Or perhaps at the end of the day, they did consider that. But they realized, you know what? Even if our product's gonna be mid, this show has done its job. We don't care about making a great plot. It's just, it's, it's just gotta be watchable. We'll slap Suicide Squad there and it's gonna do extra promo to DC Universe and stuff like that. I think that Suicide Squad is an enjoyable watch, but I'm not gonna say this is amazing, right? Based on the episodes that I've seen, I give it like a fair like six point something out of 10 and there's nothing wrong with that, right? There's, it's, it's, it's an enjoyable watch, but don't tell me that this is a big brain show or the um, most unique fucking eccentric fucking isekai plot that you've ever seen, cause it's not. Plus anime Harley Quinn, then look us weaves dead in the eye and go. <laughs> I knew you would come. All in all. I hate this fucking voice acting bro the dommy mommy asmr low voice fucking vocal fry pitch fucking voice acting uh, hello wow you did welcome traveler so shut the fuck every fucking mommy english voice actor sounds like that give me something else i knew you would come all in all this seems like just a fun don't take too seriously type of show given that's exactly what we'd expect the Suicide Squad having a romp in an Isekai fantasy world. Yep, and if your expectations was just the Suicide Squad, just fucking shut up in this Isekai world, then you're gonna get what you get. That's exactly what it is, right? And it's perfectly fine. But people had expectations beyond that, and that's what wasn't delivered. World. But I'm not sure if I was expecting a bit more coming from the writer of ReZero and animated by Studio Wits, a studio that has historically. The author of ReZero wrote this? put out banger after banger because i'm not sure if there's anything else taking their focus what how the fuck i guess he didn't really give a fuck either because <laughs> like i refuse to believe the author of re-zero put in the actual effort that he put into re-zero into suicide squad i'm sorry i don't believe that he's a big fan of dc well, shit, he didn't, he clearly didn't love it enough. Like, the story of ReZero is so rich and in-depth and bountiful and immersive and Suicide Squad, he's like, Suicide Squad was just, 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 just Harley Quinn and friends fucking shit up and yeah, there's a little bit of mysteries with the other world that's shown up before, but like, what the fuck? Maybe some, so, just like how Oshinoko, this season, if you're not watching, it's all about, in the beginning, basically the conflict was the script writer trying to figure out how can we translate the source material into, you know, theater play, right? And, you know, there was a lot of restrictions that he couldn't do and stuff like that. So maybe this is one of those moments where the author was not able to do the things that he really wanted. And the, the end product is just simply the author's name slapped on it without the actual efforts that he wanted to put in existing. Nokutan! Shika! The actual. Oh, it's with Studio? I didn't know. F Hello, my dear friends. Today I want to do a class presentation about everyone's favorite animal mm. deers. Here is. Well, according to the most recent episode, deers are actually pretty low in the tier list of favorite animals, right? Cats are like number one, and deers are like number seven or something. Deer facts. They can run up to 30 miles per hour. All, right. All male deers grow antlers. Yeah, male deers, guys. Male deers with the face of fucking Hokuto no Ken. They have an avid aversion towards anyone named Connor. Deers are really? actually majestic creatures. Let's have a look at some of these magnificent animals in action. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's not... I've seen dogs do that. It's not just specific to deer. I've seen humans do it too. What do you mean? Deers can be found... To other humans. To other human, not to animals, 
Okay. Across the world, including countries like England, Japan, America, politer America, <laughs> the North Pole, and of course, no. Nah, Canada is not politer America, bro. As a Canadian, I can say this with confidence. We are basically snow Mexicans. Yep, that's what we are. Across the border up here, snow Mexico. And right below United States, Mexico. There are over 40 species of deer, such as the red deer. The reindeer, okay. the dead deer. Hey, come the on! Jump Yo, you just spoiled Bambi. Deer, or as the locals call it, jumpos, and of course, deer yeah. the Rock Johnson. Here's a fun deer joke. Okay. What do you call a deer with no eyes? A deer with no eyes. If you don't have eyes, you're like blind, right? Blind eye, deer, deer eye. I I don't know. What's the pun? Blind. That concludes. No, this is a dead joke where the fucking punchline doesn't even make sense because it's just supposed to be sarcastic. Blind. That concludes today's presentation. Okay. I hope we all learned a little bit more about deers today because I have no idea what the fuck this show is about. I parry every. I got a lot of things to say about Nokutown, bro. Gigguk doesn't want to give us his real opinion, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. But like, here's. Here okay, let's talk about Nokutown. The amount of marketing. And the virality of the trails and the openings were on another level. Everyone was spamming Nokotan, right? It went crazy. And here's the thing. I think Nokotan is suffering from success because it's not able to deliver on the promises of what people expected this show to be. Similar to Suicide Isekai Squad, again, people have these expectations. You come out of the gate with such an acid trip of a trailers and openings to make people think that this could be the next Nichijou. However, and, and they're not trying to be the next Nietzsche deal, but people have this misplaced expectations. And episode one, I think, did deliver. Episode one definitely delivered. But that's the thing. After episode one, a lot of people realized they cannot keep up with the crazy antics. And now it just seems more of a random slice of life. And then a lot of people, even though the anime itself isn't bad, but because it's not the crazy cracked show that they were expecting, people thought that Nokutan fell off hard. And in the first four episodes, the first two were okay, but the next two then goes on to introduce the rest of the other characters. And if you suddenly prioritize introductions of the side support characters, with Koshitan being the main focal point of her reactions being the content, people are getting pissed off because everyone wanted to watch this show for Nokotan's crazy antics. And unfortunately, due to the way that they prioritize the other supporting characters' introductions, it then created even less of a momentum and people really start to give less fucks about it. After the character introduction, now that we have a full roster, you know, we can do more crazy shit and we've seen that as soon as episode 4 or 5, right? All the crazy shit came to happen again. However, by then, you've already lost the interest of the tourists that thought the show was something else and now you're just left with a bunch of fans that still do enjoy Nokotan for what it is. I think that Nokotan is a very fun experience. But I think that it may have overpromised unintentionally to an audience with the marketing strategy. It did succeed, but because they're not able to deliver on this false expectations, that's why Nokotan is the way it is. It sucks that a lot of people are shitting on it. I do genuinely enjoy Nokotan. I think that she's so cute. I don't think that there is supposed to be any crazy plot. It's just cute girls doing crack things, random bullshit. I love it, but it's just, you know, everyone wants to just say bad things about that, you know, sh about shows that got hyped up to say, oh, you fell off, oh, this and that, just so that they can feel good about their fucking imaginary points online. But I think Nokotan is still a fantastic watch. Just try to realize what the show is before you go into it with false assumptions. I have no idea what the fuck this show is about. I parry everything. This show is pissing me off. I parry everything. Genuinely, the concept of I parry only thing, everything was so good. But like the main character, bro, I understand that it's supposed to be the most dense character that parries his brain cells and logic. But it's getting, I think it's pissing more people off than it's humoring people. Now this is a fantasy action about a man who parries everything. He parries swords, he parries a staff, he parries a goddamn cow. <laughs> No. <laughs> Perry the princess as well. Perry the. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, you got parried. 
Yeah, and then later, she then asks him to be like the apprentice. He parries her there too. And then he parries her dad too. This is pretty much what the title says it is. It's an anime tailor made for you Sekiro fans out there. It's an anime tailor made for you Street Fighter 3 Third Strike fans out there. And it's nice to see a protagonist who doesn't look like the same beta soy boy for once. I just want to see. I would take a beta soy boy character that is actually aware rather than this motherfucker that is so. She's just so stupid, and I understand it. that is the running gag. The focal point of the comedy and the punchline comes from him misunderstanding the situations. But goddamn, at this point, it's less funny and more fucking annoying. See how far they can take this concept. Can he parry a gun? Can he parry a nuke? Can he parry my invasive thoughts? Oh, ho, ho, you can parry everything, huh? Well, parry this. You're a talentless hack, you'll never achieve anything in life, and you're old. Damn. Unk. I had sexual relations with your mother. Oh! Elsewhere in fantasy, I parry everything again. Ugh. I enjoyed the concept of it. It's just like, god damn. I just didn't know what the punchline or like the formula of the show was going to be. And like, the interesting thing is, even if the main character and his supporting characters are dumb as fuck and never understands anything going on. The plot that is independent from them, they can really tell sad, dark stories. Like, even the most recent episode, the whole demon child backstory, like, that shit came out of nowhere. And I was like, whoa, I didn't know a show like this could deliver on, like, a, such a sad and serious dark tone, but it did. So at least it, it's got that going on. Plus Size Elf is here to undo all the good the Dumbbell Show has done for Weaves with the series giving us some American representation in the only way right. anime knows how. That's right, Blonde Girls. If you're a fan Elves. of cake, I don't think you're ready because respectfully, this anime doesn't have cake. It's the entire fucking baking industry. We got Onis, we got Dark Elves, we got Marseille after season 3 of Dungeon Meshi. <laughs> Failure Frame is your pick if you want some dark- Failure Frame- sorry, uh, Plus Size Elf? I mean... I don't know if your boy Rock Lee's still watching it, titling every one of his videos, uh, Jamaicans watch Plus Size Zell for the first time or something, but uh, we watched episode one. It was what it was, right? It's not supposed to be some crazy story that, like, some kind of crazy plot. It's just, you know, just goofy, etchy fun. I think that it was enjoyable, I guess. Um, edgy fun. This one was a niche concept, but I actually enjoyed it. Wow, he just skipped failure frame. He literally just skipped failure. <laughs> Dude, Failure Frame had three seconds of her walking down the stairs and then Giga skipped it. Um, edgy fun. This one was a niche con. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll give you a little summary about Failure Frame. It's got potential. The goddess is so hot and evil. It's got the isekai setting of Ari Furata. Because like, it's like a classroom being transported. And I love that. I Actually, one of my favorite isekai settings is the um, Arifureta setup. Well, not really Arifureta, more like Kumo Deska, which is So I'm a Spider, So What, where your entire class gets summoned, but the identities are unknown, and you're trying to guess, like, who could these characters be, and there's already these established backstories of the class hierarchy, who's the bully, who's the popular kid, who's the hot girl, blah, 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 that adds into the story and the dynamics of the characters. But Failure Frame does that, the main character has got these OP debuff skills, but everyone thinks the debuffs are weak for whatever reason. And the goddess is an evil, evil bitch, where in like Skimichi Moonlit Fantasy, it's kind of has a revenge story. But the animation, fuck, dude. It is such a failure of a frame. It's so ironic, too. Like, how the fuck are you going to name your anime failure frame, but the animation are literally failed frames? The CGI usage is fucking atrocious, bro. And usually, I don't care about CGI if the story is good enough for me to not care about the actions. And the story is definitely getting better. And the main character, I do enjoy how dark and cunning and calculating he is. Multiple times, I fall into his bait of acting as a pussy. Then, boom. He just does the most diabolical shit and I'm like, let's fucking go. The CGI is such a whiplash. The amount of times that the, um, like, like... The transition between CGI and 2D is so fucking horrendous that it really does take away from the show. CGI isn't bad, but the implementation of the CGI is what's worrisome. 
I just hope that the story is going to continue to get better. And my god, all the fucking villains in this show are just rapists, bro. It is the most laziest form of writing. Again, I'm going to die on this hill. If the only way you can make your audience feel this, you know, this intense emotion of hatred for the enemy so that the main character can do something to them without it all just being justified, if that, if this is the only way to do it by having just creep rapist as the, as the villain, like you as the writer are a fucking pathetic loser. You're probably delving into some sort of fantasies that you enjoy, and it's just the lowest hanging fruit. And I don't give a fuck about how people say, But Coco TV is a good reason why they're all creepy rapists, is because everyone isekai here are bad. Well, think about this for a second. Who created that rule? The fucking author did. Of course a reason exists and why they're shitty. But ask yourself, why does it exist? Because the author created that fucking plot point so he doesn't have to fucking figure out good compelling villains but just having fucking SAO villains, these creepy sexual assault online villains here. I just think that again, this is the laziest fucking form of writing. Frame is your pick if you want some dumb, edgy fun. This one was a niche concept, but I actually enjoyed it. You have a girl who is basically engineering her own magic tools yet. in a fantasy backdrop and I was honestly impressed. You truly do feel like you're in a made-up fantasy world because they actually made engineering look fun. We're gonna play some power fantasy that is no different. <laughs> no, son. All sudden, newbie adventure, I'm actually enjoying it. It's, uh, again, just the pandering towards, like, the older main character audience because he's, like, 32 because everyone, every time, they're like, oh, he's a fucking 40-something-plus-year-old guy. But between this and Noor and I parry only because they're like, I guess, older main characters here this season. Well, Sunny Beat Adventure, I think I like more. Different from your generic OP main character in a fantasy world, except this time the protagonist is in his 30s. And mm. I feel offended that this is a representation they think 30 year olds want. You want to give us a power fantasy? Give us a. What? What should 30 year olds be? Mildly exciting new kitchen appliance. The ability to stay up past 2 a.m. Hell, wake me up when there's a protagonist who doesn't okay. get a life altering injury because he slept funny one night. All right, I think he's trying to let us know something. First, there was anime. Um, regarding Osanibi Adventure, um, it was compelling in the beginning because of the themes that it was trying to tell us that even if you're too old, that it's never too late to follow your dreams. Even if you had nothing from the beginning because the story did set him up as just a normal person. But I think a lot of people were pissed off when his secret skill was actually dormant all the time. And at that point, it's just like, oh, what? So he was a chosen one all this time. Eh, I don't really mind. It's all fiction at the end of the day. It's still entertaining, power fantasy. I don't think that's supposed to be anything amazing, but it's enjoyable. It's enjoyable. A life-altering injury because he slept funny one night. First, there was anime. Mm -hmm. Then came fictional idols. Oh shit! In anime avatars. Then VTubers. Then came real-life idols. Oh shit! In anime avatars. And then now, I present to you. Anime with VTubers. Two. Fictional anime about fictional idols playing Woo! real life idols in anime avatar. Oh my god! <laughs> For the first time, anime has actually given us a VTuber anime that accurately depicts the culture and content to the point. Does it? Does every VTuber look like this? Yeah? Every one of your sexy VTubers you want, they, uh, they all look like that in real life too, guys. Don't forget that. To the point where even I was surprised. Real looking live 2D models using OBS as a streaming mm. software. They play actual stream games like- <laughs> no, I'm getting triggered off of this. Oh shit. This is about to go to the orange run. Oh my fucking god. Getting over it and of course going live on you- our tube. tube? Anime Our has been tube. streaming for a true to life depiction of VTubers, but I gotta wonder how accurate it is to have a drunk VTuber who just shouts obscenity on street. Huh? It's his wife. I like to eat ass. What? <laughs> you know, for once we have a season not dominated by isekai or fantasy because romance. Yeah, I heard the VTuber anime was pretty funny in the beginning. I think a lot of the uh, headlines were just like that gooning comment, right, made by one of the VTubers. It's like, oh, she just liked me for real, for real, DGen VTuber, wow. Seems to be going through a bloody second renaissance this summer. Senpai's and Otokonoko is a cute little romance where a girl confesses to a female. Is it a cute one? I've only seen episode one, but it did look like it was going down a really heavy drama route with the whole gender dysphoria and what, you know, is this a cross-dressing a hobby? Is this my identity? And does my mom not, you know, approve? Like, how can I get over this? And I started and I was like, ooh, this is going to be a little bit too heavy. Mel crush only to find out that they're actually 
A boy. Yes. Yes. This is just the Stolfo fans coming to terms with their sexuality. <laughs> My wife has no emotions. Robot waifu. Robot waifu, baby. AKA man gets dumped and immediately goes to fuck his toaster. I get that this is meant to be a cute and innocent little series. But 10 to 20 years, ladies and gentlemen. 10 to 20 years. Even if you have no riz, no game, even if you'll never have a partner, you will be offered a, a robot, a life partner in 10 to 20 years. I definitely see it happening. Who's going to make you first? Meta? Apple, your first fucking waifu bot, bro. For the price of, I don't know, $5,000. It's coming nearby you soon. About a guy falling for his robot housewife appliance, but dude, seeing this guy awkwardly attempt to chat up his toaster gave me shades of the same energy as watching a grown-up Kazuya from Rent-A-Girlfriend. Well, that's, that's not a good thing, is it? Because he's supposed to be just the shittiest fucking character, right? <laughs> Come on, being a certified bro. Smegma male. Another system. What's it just say, Smegma male? A romance anime? Wait, no. False alarm. It's just a romance with two girls who are sisters. Okay. <laughs> Look at that anime. No sweet home Alabama this time. This one actually has the most accurate sibling relationship because it's about two twin sisters taking it turns going. Mom's. That's crazy. That is actually insane that they added the extra line there between the booty cheeks, bro. That's, that's actually crazy over here and over here. Sisters taking it turns going, Mom says it's my turn on the Xbox. But you know, instead of playing Call of Duty, they're playing Halo Reach for My Peach with their childhood <laughs> friend. So you play a co-op. Okay. I would have picked Call of Duty. Enough of your harem anime. We have a girl who is the harem. She can... I will refrain from slandering Giji Harem. Episode 1 was very fun. But at a certain point, it was just the same recycled four fucking personas being repeated over and over again. And I just found it cringe. I'm sorry. That's just how I genuinely felt. I don't think it's a bad anime. I'm just not the target audience. It can be a Tsundere, Kudere, Dandere, Little Sister. Yeah, add that one to the list. <laughs> Introducing anime's very first Omnidere. Omnidere. This is just the girlfriend version of those knockoff game cartridges that promise 100 games in one. I was wondering where harem anime could go after one man find <laughs> The reverse of 100 girlfriends. Finding 100 girlfriends. Who knew that the next step was just 100 girlfriends in one? In one. Wait a minute. This is just weaponized schizophrenia. The proper etiquette. Maybe. And I still wish that Data Live could have done something like this, where Kurumi had different personalities and every- it was basically a Kurumi harem. My schizophrenia. The proper etiquette when conversing with girls. A guide by 2.5D Seduction. I am not taking a guide from a fucking series called 2.5D Seduction, where the main character literally wants him nothing to do with the 3D girl, but a girl just appears out of nowhere, strips down, and just puts on the cosplay of the anime character that he masturbates furiously to every night. You really think that's gonna tell you any actual good life lessons on how to approach girls? No! That's right! Parry these bitches! Yeah, two D rejected. Sorry, three D rejected. Right? He prefers the two D more than three D. That girl just chases after him, and he's like, "Nope, nope, you are real. I do not want you." Wait, you're telling me a two D obsessed, unsociable hentai addicted weeb starts an anime club by himself, yep. and the yep. only person who joins is a cute, attractive girl whose only yep. interest is cosplaying his favorite character? Yep. Right yeah, is is like just just think about what kind of show this is marketed towards, right? Like, of course they're not trying to fucking they're, they're not trying to listen. They're not trying to be discreet. They're not. Right? They're just straight up telling you this is a fucking power fantasy for people that straight up has given up on 3D and settled for 2D. Whose only interest is cosplaying his favorite character right before a hot superstar model transfers over who's actually no his childhood friend that's had a crush on him for oh years. Oh my god. And all they want to do is get him to take pictures of them cosplaying as hot mm -hmm. cultured anime characters. Yep. And you motherfuckers tell me Isekai is the power fantasy genre.
I'm telling you, rom-com is the true power fantasy. Straight up, loser enemies marketed towards losers that preys upon the desperation of these losers who are touched, just touchless by actual women by selling them these delusions, which at the end of the day just works against them because they're gonna have an even further idea, like reality of what a real girl is. You're not gonna fucking understand how to interact with girls by watching shit like this. But I don't think people are watching shows to learn how to interact with girls like this. I'm just bringing up that point because of the earlier thing that gave us said in the beginning. From the creator of Hyoka, we've got another mystery detective series that is certainly a treat for the eyes. I can already tell that this is the enemy that about 14 of my audiences are glazing saying, Oh my god, only smart people watch shit like this. I can't believe you losers are still fucking watching Wistoria and like fucking other power fantasies. It might not be Kyoto animation, but this still looks bloody beautiful. The it does look good. The atmosphere, the directing. This no, for sure the animation looks amazing so far. This looks good. Wait a minute. Mm. Oh, they're not siblings! We're finally safe, boys! This is a different kind of detective story. There are no high-stakes mysteries to solve, no murder to uncover. It's about solving the little mysteries you find in everyday life. They have I have, like, without a doubt, I know for a fact this would fail in my channel on YouTube reactions. Again, that doesn't determine if an anime is good. But a show like this, there's no fucking shot. That you monkeys have the attention span to sit down and watch this and appreciate this with me. We have a full 10 minute Sherlock Holmes breakdown about how this guy makes his hot chocolates. This is like if Makoto Shinkai animation. adapted a Reddit thread from r slash mildly interesting. But somehow it keeps you engaged all the way through. It's about getting you invested in something inconsequential. Finding something interesting in the mundane. And it really shows how these people really need to find a fucking hobby as soon as possible. <laughs> I hate this show, but I love this show. It's so... <laughs> makes me mauled because of that blue-haired bitch, Anna, but like, she's low-key, just makes the show way more interesting. Too Many Losing Heroines is actually one of my favorite shows this season. It's great. You'd be in an isekai then, mate. This season has been a no holds bar free for all for romance, but even with all the choice on hands, there was still one that impressed me the most. Too yes, like genuinely, this show was impressive. Like every episode, man, they just fucking hit you out of left field with a new twist that just subverts your expectations, keeps you on your fucking toes. It's not boring, it's just so fucking exciting. But there's a lot of things to be also be mad at because of that blue hair bitch. I hate her so much, but oh, I love her too. The losing heroines shows a guy accidentally witnessing a short, blue haired anime girl getting last place in her own romance anime. Deserved! Like, uh... <laughs> Hello, Ram. <laughs> Hello, Ram. But she deserved this, bro. Anna deserves all the sadness and all the depression and all the NTR. You deserve this, Anna. I don't care. Uh, all of them. And through that, forms an unlikely friendship before unwittingly becoming the center to a bunch of other girls who have all been the rem to their rivals, Amelia, if you're picking up what I'm putting down. If yes, I'm getting it. Or Evo, this shit is the loser's bracket. This is one of those shows that is self-aware. <laughs> this shit is loose. No, straight up. Because, like... Who's battling right now? It's just a bunch of cucked loser girls that's fighting amongst each Like, it's like, what are you trying to win? It's just a battle against the losers right now. Enough to poke fun at all the cliches that plague the romance genre, but doing it in a way that clearly celebrates everything that it's taken inspiration from. It gives you some great character writing, organic banter and jokes, but isn't shy about hitting you with these emotional scenes in between all that. Oh, and did I mention the production? This anime just seems A1 to be teeming with passion. Just look at the ending. They had to experiment with new dollies and camera rigs, combining live action shots with Oh, I didn't even notice that. And even the most recent episode was the special ending with Lemon. That was beautiful. Real cell animation to get this cool aesthetic. All this effort for something 90% of you are probably going to skip anyway. But that's... No, I think that... Well, I don't know, Gigox audience. But from like the YouTube anime reaction space again. And I know that this is not like a, a like an actual significant... Uh, deciding factor, but it is still a data point. I see too many losing heroines doing fantastic in a lot of people's channels, including mine. I think that there's a lot of interest for this show. It's how you know they give a shit. And it looks like the team have taken that same- This sensei is crazy. Spoiler. I'm gonna give you a spoiler right now. Three, two, one. This sensei bugs the school 
to listen to on the conversations of different characters and takes notes of the different relationship paths and it's beyond crazy and creepy but funny but creepy and then her best friend alcoholic at, at, at the school yep drunk on the fucking job these teachers are fucking crazy in passion and put it in the rest of the anime because it looks fantastic it does Out of all the romance anime this had the strongest premiere and is one of the strongest premiere over Roche today over Roche today, Alia Kuchi Swipe? Maybe? I don't know. Shows I'm gonna be keeping a close eye on because it's just. <laughs> <laughs> Look. Giggle just wants a little sister, huh? I don't know what is up with all the sussy sisters this season, but I swear my mom's life, this is not the reason I'm praising them. We just. I mean, you literally had an Aero Manga Sensei fucking pillow, did you not? Don't You don't have to lie to me, Giga. Just come out of the closet. Just embrace it. Just have a whole season where some of the most popular or beautifully crafted shows have this little sister in them who seems way too enthusiastic about their brother, okay? Look, there are other- Like, when am I gonna get my fantasy of a bigger MILF sister being like a little brocon, right? Like, where is my anime where I can insert myself as the Shota and have a fucking MILF just like, just grooming me? Like, where is that? Why is everyone just a degenerate that just wants a little sister? Like, where is my MILF anime? Are animes you could watch? I mean, what else is hot this season? <laughs> oh, Snoko? Talk about it. Come on, bro. Nobody Go. say Ruby? Ruby. a word. Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> Domestic girlfriend, baby, let's hey go! Guys, hope you enjoyed that video. Thank you very much this month, too. Y'all know what to do. Thank you, Gigox, so much for the recap of the different enemies airing this season. And honestly, of the different enemies that we're watching, right? Not trying to be biased because of performance and, you know, viewership on YouTube. I think that Too Many Losing Girlfriends is definitely a great watch. Roche Today, of course. I am enjoying Tower of God, but, you know, you'd have to watch the sequel for that. Um, I know I'd, I said a lot of mean things about Elusive Samurai, but it doesn't mean it's a bad anime. But I think that this summer 2024 is pretty decent. But I think the real lineup is, you know, spring 2024. Sorry, winter 2024. That's coming out. Sorry, fall 2024. That's, or is it winter? I fucking forget. Anyways, I'll see you next time.